My big fat Greek wedding three. This is the third film in the franchise. I don't know why, but it is. <laughs> and everybody's back. We got Nia Vardalos, John Corbett, and uh, what we're missing this time around is Michael Constantine, who was such a dominating presence in the first two films. Uh, this film absolutely is very much about the loss of the patriarch of the family, and uh, the entire plot sort of revolves around that, almost like Nia wrote it after Michael died, and was like, uh, I have an idea for a film now. I wanted to pay tribute to that. So, um, the gang is back. They are heading off to Greece. Uh, to contact some of their dad's old friends for a very special reunion and also hopefully to uh, at least his uh, at least her brother and uh, his their father's son uh, I don't know, Nick I think is his name uh, for his his goal is to uh, you know bury his father's ashes which it comes up later in the film. Uh, it's kind of, I guess it's sort of a spoiler. I don't know that films like this have spoilers. But uh, it's like he's aware of it, but she's not. Uh, so, But uh, it's a conflict of all of, like two seconds. Uh, it's like he's, she's more mad that she just didn't know. And, she, and then she's like, oh, well. Eh. Alright. <laughs> she just kind of gives up. This film is like, feels like it's... It feels like Nia realizes how poignant that is, so she's just not going to fight it. She's just like, yeah, this is really moving and touching, and, and I want my audiences to feel emotions. Um, what this movie does is it increases dramatically, uh, since this film lacks uh, a, a, any sort of m real uh, sense of elder in the film. Uh, Andrea Martin gets way more screen time than she's ever had in a Greek wedding film because this film is now missing entirely Michael Constantine and Lady Kazan is, has been given an Alzheimer's plot so she gets left at home. Uh, she does not make the trip to Greece. I don't know how much of that was Lainey's choice. Uh, maybe she is of that age where she can't travel and they just needed to do some scenes with her sitting in a chair talking on the phone. So, um, two powerhouses are being left uh, behind and not headed out to Greece, which meant a lot of screen time for Andrea Martin. <laughs> just a lot of screen time for Andrea Martin. Um, Paris is back, too. Their daughter, who uh, who her career has done absolutely nothing since the second film, she has not exploded into the onto the scene. Um, she's back looking for more jobs, and uh, she's been given a new boyfriend. I guess the high school boyfriend didn't work out for her, and uh, but this is a guy that she's not currently dating, but has romantic entanglements with. And the family brings him along as their Greek guide. And uh, she's not very happy about it. She's blossoming into a nice young woman. Uh, I was a little confused by a lot of the subplots they were throwing her way. Because the last film absolutely ends with her talking about which college she's going to go to. Meanwhile, there's still more talk about college in her life. And I'm like, it's been six years. Shouldn't she be, like, done and moving on to other things. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so shouldn't she have, like, a new... Shouldn't she be like, yeah, I graduated, and now I'm in this field, and I do this for a living. But there's, like, this NYU letter that's, like, really important to her. And, uh, I don't know. It's very, it's very weird. Like, they didn't really know what to do with her. So... Uh, and once again, John Corbett's back and still has no family of his own. Uh, he's just been absorbed into the Greek family, and, um, that is, that is where he lives now. So, um, I'm pretty certain the audio description on this was done by Leila Jones-Wilmore, except for Peacock doesn't really let me know. 
because uh, as soon as it can possibly get me out of the credits it tries to it's like credits are rolling and let's put you into something else we don't want you to accidentally exit the app but it always gets me it always makes me force quit the app too because i'm so worried that whatever title it chose for me is just gonna end up in my queue and then i'm like oh god i don't need the real housewives of whatever city and my you know i don't know what you're picking for me please leave me alone um yeah i wish i wish it didn't push so hard it it doesn't on kids' titles. I've noticed that it'll let a kid's title play out uh, before suggesting. But unfortunately, this is not for kids. This is for parents. Kids would be so bored in this film, <laughs> just so bored. So uh, this is traipsing around Greece, which would be more appealing. Uh, if we were cited, I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna be the blind film critic that says that. This is where being cited is beneficial to us enjoying a film. Uh, audio description is focused a lot on the plot. It's focused a lot on the story and the characters and what it is that the story and the plot of characters are doing, regardless of where they are. Now, generally, when you take a cast like this and you send them overseas and you send them to, like, literally anywhere, um, part of the, the appeal of doing so is that we get to see sort of the... The area, the culture, the what is you know what do these buildings look like? What are these ancient uh, structures that have been around for thousands of years in in these places look like? What do these small villages look like? How how different are their lives from ours? You know, there's a lot of things just happening in the background that have no relevance to the plot that are usually just sort of set up to kind of give us an idea of what life in Greece may look like. But visiting Greece, sort of like a, like a little travel video for Greece. Might, it might make you want to travel there, might not. But the audio description focuses on, uh, on just the plot and the characters and advancing story and uh, who's entering a room and who's exiting a room and all the important stuff that we would need to know in a movie it, this also just happens to be there. There's another appeal to this film. The side appeal to this film, at least for sighted people, is, oh, I get to go see what pretty Greece looks like. And there are a lot of films like this that take, that are very much taking people and sending them off to a location. Uh, most films where any single woman has to go to Italy are basically that. <laughs> we keep sending all these single women to Italy to find themselves. <laughs> and basically we're supposed to be enjoying the, the the scenery. Those films are actually shot in Italy. This people, you know, they they pay for these movies to be shot on location so that you can get those shots because that's the appeal. That's what they run in the trailers is for you to be able to come see this movie and it'll feel like you're taking a trip to Italy or to Paris or to Greece or, you know, wherever to the, to the Irish countryside, you know, it's, it doesn't really matter. Pick a location to the Great Wall of China, to the pyramids of Giza, you know, I mean, there are things that, um, and, and cultures that we're supposed to be getting immersed in, but n not as the main plot. Just sort of like in the background, you're supposed to be like, ooh, ah, oh, oh my god, that looks so pretty. Oh, I want that. Oh, we should take a trip to Greece. Like, there's definitely, in the movie theater, there's like somebody, assuming people went to the movie theater for this, it didn't make that much money. But there was at least like one couple where the wife was sitting next to her husband. And she was like, I want to take a good trip to Greece. No, this looks so cool. And that's the point. That's the point of this film. And that doesn't really work on blind people because we're just... The, the audio description is just not keyed in to, like, immerse you in Greece. It's keyed in to give you important knowledge about the advancement of the plot. It doesn't... This film could be anywhere, you know? It happens to be in Greece. But uh, you will, you'll you know all about the characters and, and what they're doing in the plot and everything, but not necessarily the rustic feel of 
of the small village they're in or um, just how old everything is <laughs> that they're around. So it's it's a very interesting concept. and I, It's not just something that affects Greek Wedding 3. It affects a lot of films like this. Um, but uh, it doesn't mean that the film isn't doesn't have merit that films like this don't have value to us it just means man that plot's got to be entertaining because we can't i i you know uh i'm sorry but a you know an hour and a half long visual postcard for travel to a country is not really gonna do much for us i think i don't know it's uh so we're, we're going to be honed in on, was that joke funny? What is this movie about? What are we trying to do here? What are you trying to say here? Um, and luckily, again, as much as humanly possible, this film did bring the same cast along. So she's not trying to constantly find and create chemistry with new people with whom she has no chemistry. She is bringing along the same people... That she's always had and sort of maybe mixing it up with a couple new characters who are greek specific uh who are locals and are sort of you know helping to flesh out the story but uh a lot of the main interactions have to do with the fact that she is dealing with characters she's been dealing with since the original greek wedding film was a breakout success over 20 years ago so, <sighs> um, I do know that uh, I've I've definitely heard some thoughts about Nia Vardalos's choices of direction because uh, she's behind she's in the director's chair here, and um, some people ha thought she had some weird cuts. I do listen to other movie critics. I don't live in a vacuum where I think my my opinion is the only one, and and nobody else's is valid. And uh, I did listen to that. However, I can't really comment on those kind of things because I can't see weird cuts of and shots of, of you know, just, I don't know, mountains. So, um, <laughs> it's just, it, it, it felt kind of like two. It was kind of like, did, did I need, did I need this film as much as I needed the second film or the first film you know what is it why am I here and um as I said uh in my review for the second film having watched these two films in the same day back to back and catching up on the second film while watching the third film there's sort of a weird tie-in and it's the Michael Constantine factor that sort of made me appreciate the second film more because I was more tuned into his you know, essentially what might be, I believe to be his final performance, um, or at least his final major performance, you know, his final performance in this franchise. And then in the third film, how they poignantly treat his character and, uh, and say goodbye, you know? Um, so I think that's handled really well. And I think that's probably what, uh, saves this film from being just utterly a waste of time is that if you were a fan of the patriarch of this whole family to begin with, then you see sort of how that passes along and um, this gets very emotional. And, you know, the, the, the guys talk about, you know, who's in charge of the family now and, and they have those kind of conversations like, I don't know, like they're the mob or something and somebody has to be at the head of the family. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of that in it. And it just, it does actually have more anger to it, sadly, because Michael Constantine passed away. I'm not 100% sure how this film would have worked out if Michael was still around. Would he have just stayed back home with Lainey? Would the two of them both be too old to travel? I don't know. But um, this is a nice sort of fi final way to say goodbye to Michael and... God, I hope this series 
Um, I don't know where they would go for Greek Wedding 4. Greek Wedding 3 did not make enough money to make me think that they're going to make a Greek Wedding 4. But uh, should they, I think it would be a mistake because this film kind of rounds out the franchise in a way where you just go, all right, well, you got to do that. So stick with it. You landed it. The plane does land. <laughs> Doesn't crash. Um, and uh, it's an uneventful ride, but it landed. So <laughs> sometimes I'll, an uneventful ride when you're on a plane is really all you're looking for. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's... Uh, it's 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 not it's not gonna be one of the year's classics, but uh, basically, like what I said for the second film, this one is almost exactly the same. It's got a very nice narrator's voice on it. It's very in tune to um, the fact that there's a large ensemble that needs to follow around. So please check IMDb in advance and familiarize yourself again with all these names because oh my god. Um, and, uh, we just, yeah, hopefully we just won't get any more Greek wedding films, but, um, this is, uh, I guess the final, hopefully the final, so I'm going to give my big fat Greek wedding three. C plus. Same grade I gave the sequel. Basically, they're both about equal. They actually kind of complement each other. I would say if you're going to watch one, watch the other. Actually, I didn't have the worst time in the world watching these back to back because of how they um, the Michael like I said, the Michael Constantine effect. So um, it just kind of helped these films in a weird way. So uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please click that subscribe button. I'm so close to my, to breaking past my goal of 200 for the year. I'd love to go as high as I can by the end of the year, but, uh, I'm close enough that I feel like if I don't hit the goal, I don't know what happened. You know, I'm just <laughs> so close. Anyway, uh, as for my website, macmovieguy.com, you can follow me on uh, X threads and Instagram at Mac Movie Guy. You can go to the audio description project adp.acb.org. It'll let you know who has audio description where you can what has audio description where you can watch it. And uh, you can go to the adna.org where you can look up somebody like Leilani Jones Wilmore, who I believe is the narrator of this film. Uh, and you can uh, read more about them. So that's it. I will. Uh, watch something else and see you guys on the other side.